There is a general feeling among the public that it's time for a change. Candidate who speaks out against a kind of old political power and still pitch yourself as new. Around the world, there could be some serious changes. 2023 was a year of conflict and confusion. Russia and Ukraine's war pounded on in a seemingly endless stalemate. And fighting in the Middle East has rapidly escalated since Hamas's October 7th attacks on Israel and Israel's subsequent invasion of Gaza. But we finally made it to 2024, and this year, voters across the world will have a chance to share how they are feeling at the polls. There are elections in over 60 countries that account for over 40% of the world population. These elections mark the biggest test democracy has faced in generations. Whatever the outcomes, the world won't look the same on the other side of them. Today on the show, we'll hear from Bloomberg reporters across the globe who are covering these elections on what to watch for and what these elections are likely to mean for all of us. I'm your host, Sarah Holder, and this is The Big Take from Bloomberg News. Voters in these elections across the globe are, of course, seeking candidates that can address local pocketbook issues like inflation and jobs. But whether they know it or not, their votes are also going to shape big global conflicts. If you look across the globe, basically, there's conflict everywhere. Daniel Flatley is a national security reporter for Bloomberg. All of those conflicts have some dimension that could be changed by the outcome of an election. Voters who go to the polls this year will also be helping shape something national security experts call the global economic order. Daniel explained what that means. Basically, you're talking about the quote unquote Western nations like the U.S. and Europe and a lot of the uh, poorer countries around the world who are trying to basically get a share of this piece of the pie that is the global economy. And within that economic order, you have rivalries, right? So you have the U.S. and Europe, basically, and then you have China. And China has risen uh, faster than anyone really expected and has become a real economic rival, not just to the U.S., but to Europe and a lot of European nations as well. There are a lot of moving parts here. So let's start with the elections in these three countries, Russia, Venezuela, and India. Together, they're home to more than one and a half billion people, almost half the number of voters participating in this year's slate of elections. The influence these leaders have on regional and global concerns is massive. First, let's talk about Russia, where the election outcome is almost certain. A 2021 rule change paved the way for Vladimir Putin to pursue up to two more six-year terms as president. And this year, Putin faces no meaningful opposition for the role he first helmed in March 2000 and has essentially held ever since. And next, in Venezuela, our colleague Patty Laya tells us what to expect. With slim chances of winning an open election, Maduro is pulling at almost every lever at his disposal to rally domestic support and extend his rule. Still, longtime Venezuelan observers find it highly unlikely that Maduro would allow any opponent to defeat him next year. His main rival, opposition primary winner Maria Corina Machado, is still banned from running for public office. And then in India, Narendra Modi is all but assured a third term as prime minister. He's seen as a crucial political partner to the U.S. and other allies, who have tended to turn a blind eye to concerns over political assassinations on foreign soil, discrimination against minority groups, and the seeming lack of fairness in the upcoming national elections. Here's Daniel again for more on this relationship. The first state dinner that Biden hosted was Prime Minister Narendra Modi here in the U.S. And that was a signal, basically, that this partnership is important and needs to be preserved at all costs. Because if you look at the world the way that national security officials here in the U.S. look at the world, basically what they're seeing is threats from multiple vectors, China, Russia, the Middle East, Iran, but they have an important partner in India. While elections in Russia, India, and Venezuela seem predetermined, the outcome of many upcoming elections across the globe remain unknown. We'll get into which other nations go to the polls and what their voters are deciding after the break. 
the U.S. is no longer the unipolar power in the world. Uh, there's a rising China. There's other countries that are vying for a piece of the pie. And as that sort of shakes itself out, who is running these countries is going to be enormously consequential. In some places, the status quo looks primed to change. Our colleague Alex Wickham in the UK lays out the state of play there. Years of political turmoil with the Conservatives in power since Brexit, five prime ministers in seven years, and particularly over the last three few years with Boris Johnson, Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak. We have perhaps the biggest prospect of a change in government in 14 years. The opposition Labour Party is now consistently ahead in opinion polls by around 20 points. So... Keir Starmer, the Labour leader, is well on course to become the next prime minister. And in Mexico, Maya Averbach reports... Mexico will likely have its first female president at the end of this year. Now, the front runner of the race by a huge margin is Claudia Scheinbaum, who comes from the current ruling party. Her competitor, Social Galvez, has called attention to the current president's record on violence, the really high homicide rate, the lack of green energy policies, the importance for reforms. We see a kind of mimicry of the discourse between these two leading women trying to pitch themselves as candidates who will really represent the voice of the people in this race. Meanwhile, in West Africa... New leaders in Ghana and Senegal will face their own unique set of challenges. Yinka Ibukun lays out the stakes in Ghana. Ghana's next leader has their work cut out for them. The country is in the throes of a debt crisis, and the central bank is struggling to tame inflation. Under an IMF program, the victor will have little fiscal space to respond to citizens' immediate concerns. By contrast, Senegal is one of Africa's strongest growing economies. It's slated to begin oil and gas production this year and preparing for an election that could undermine its stability. Even in places with smaller economies like these, elections can have big consequences. They can set off a kind of butterfly effect where electoral results in one country will influence policy in others. Additional oil production in Mexico or Senegal can influence U.S. energy policy. So you have energy-producing states that are kind of fighting for relevance at this point. With a lot of these countries that have economic resources and have and are kind of up and coming, so to speak, they want to really show that they can hold sway on the world stage, that they can influence events. Where elections are free and fair, the leaders voters choose matter a lot, not only for local economies, but for the global economy. As investors look to try and make sense of a changing global economic order, and as forces like the COVID pandemic, climate change, and regional conflicts inject chaos into an already complex world, Dan says, pay attention to the way this election season shakes out. So whether it comes to housing policy, uh, industrial policy, whether to bail out certain companies or not bail out other companies, how long the recovery takes, how long it lasts, or even look at the COVID-19 pandemic. All of those things, those decisions are ultimately made by politicians. How we get from here to there is going to involve a lot of day-to-day decisions that are going to be shaped by philosophies of the candidates that are running. And we'll keep following these elections as they unfold, both inside the U.S. and outside. Later this week, voters in Taiwan will decide on their president, and our Big Take Asia team will have stories in the buildup and aftermath of the results. And this weekend, the U.S. presidential primaries will begin in Iowa, where our new sister show, The Big Take DC, will be on the ground as former President Donald Trump will try and fend off rivals for the chance to unseat President Joe Biden this November. Thanks for listening to The Big Take from Bloomberg News. I'm Sarah Holder. This episode was produced by Alex Sugiura. It was fact-checked by Molly Nugent. It was mixed by Blake Maples. Sage Bauman is our executive producer and head of podcasts. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow.